Ian. Ian, wake up. We gotta do a show. Ian. 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 Welcome to the Bumblecast! to season three of the Bumblecast, everyone. I am your host, Ian Flynn, the Bumble King, and joining me as always is the man that makes all the magic happen, Kyle Krause. Uh, well, I make the magic happen in terms of, uh, well, I'm not really magical, so I'm not really sure what you're talking about. Let me put it this way. There wouldn't be a show if you weren't running it. Are you sure? I think you could figure it out. You're a smart man. Uh, we wouldn't be on season three if it was up to me. Let me put it that way. <laughs> okay, fine. I will take your compliment with graciousness. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Kicking and screaming. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, funny thing happened to me on the way to the Bumblecast tonight. <laughs> What's that? So, ran out, did a few errands. I'm coming back, looking at the clock, going, I'm going to be right on time. I told Kyle I'd be ready at this time. Be right on time. Perfect, uh-huh. perfect. <laughs> We're waiting on the elevator, and we hear this really awful clang, uh-huh. which is never a good time because I've been stuck in that elevator before. Uh oh! The door I think, opens. I think I remember and, that. And a chihuahua pops up. Oh! All by itself. Uh huh. And so we're looking in the elevator car, going, "Hello." Okay. Well, somebody obviously just lost their dog. We'll try to look after it. Cue this family coming in behind us. They think it's our dog. They think we're leaving. So they hold the doors open. They're very nice people. Except it's not our dog. And that dog goes tearing out into the parking deck. Uh Uh-oh. So we're going, okay, somebody lost their dog and now it's running around. Nobody's going to see this cat-sized animal as they come tearing down to park. So we walk out and we're trying to get the little dog to stay with us. Little dog is freaking out. So a couple other ladies come down. They're going... Did somebody lose a dog? And we're like, yes, we're trying to corral it. Do you know who it belongs to? And they go, yes, there's a Filipino woman upstairs. She doesn't speak much English, and she's freaking out because she's missing. So now there's four of us in the parking deck. I've got groceries slung on my arm. Uh Uh-huh. Trying to get this tiny little chihuahua to calm down and not get run over as people come in. Somebody goes back, gets the owner. The owner comes down calls the little dog out, and it turns out when she got off at the ground floor, the little dog ran back into the elevator, and Uh, that clang was one of those release leashes snapping back. Ooh. So, not only was the little dog alone, it was probably freaked out because of the leash. Yeah. So, 15 minutes of that later, owner got her dog back, we made some new friends with the neighbors, and everyone got there happily ever after. Excellent. That's good. What have you been up to, Kyle? <laughs> uh, well, uh, let's see. Last weekend, or this past weekend, actually. Was it this past weekend? Man, time is weird. I cannot remember. Anyway, a day? <laughs> there was a day recently where I went to go see Star Wars, or Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Ooh. Not Star Wars, a Rogue One story. Eh, the, the words eventually assemble into some order. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, have you seen it yet, Ian? Not yet, no. Okay. Uh, do so. That's pretty Already. much That's pretty much all I'll say. Uh, please. I've heard good things about I've heard nothing but good things about it. Yeah, and the people who say good things about it are correct. I mean, the worst I've heard about it is it's an in-betweenquel where you basically know the outcome because, you know, right. episode four came out in the eighties. Yeah, right. Of course. No, it's a 70s, good, it's a yes. fun film. Right. So who cares? Right. Exactly. Um, it's 
I don't know if fun is the right word, I guess. Maybe kind of a little bit. It's pretty dark and grim for a Star Wars movie, but in a good way. In a good way. Uh, it is... The characters are interesting, for the most part. Um, they do get introduced rather quickly, kind of just like one right after the other. Uh, but they come together well, and it's just... It's a solid story. It justifies the reason for why the Death Star has the weakness that it does. Ooh. So it's like, so because you think like, oh, what the Death Star for years, it's always been for decades. It's been like, why would the Empire design a, their, basically their ultimate super weapon in such a way that it's able to be easily taken down by a single small fighter? With now, a now, well aimed, with easy. a well aimed, with a well aimed shot. People well, forget right. that the person it who made that right. shot was a freaking Jedi in training, right? And they it, forget about like the twelve pilots who died making the approach. <laughs> they didn't get the shot off. Right, right, right. I mean, it wasn't easy, but the fact that it was able to be done was right, right. telling, and they actually did justify it and justify it in a way that makes sense. Cool. So now I'm really looking forward to it. Um the the movie looks like a Star Wars movie. It's the only Star Wars prequel that actually looks like the <laughs> original the original trilogy because the because the uh because the uh prequel trilogy obviously it really <laughs> the visual style of it does not look like Star Wars to me like at no. all. No. Uh I I I kind of understand I guess what the intent was supposed to be of it, but it just doesn't work. So, I mean, but the closest this... it ever gets to looking like Star Wars is Episode Three, and that's because they made a visual bridge with it in Episode. Right. So they made it work despite themselves. Exactly. I would say that it has the best space battle of any of the movies so far. Ooh, in my personal that, opinion. Mm. In my personal opinion, anyway, the best. You're space raising battle. the stakes here, sir. We're going to have to. Yeah. Have a discussion about this. Why? What, do you, what movie do you think has the best space battle? <laughs> well, they all have really good space battles. Well, yes, they do. Yes, this is up for debate here. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. All right. All I right. do like Jedi space battle, though. I'll, I'll say that. But that's a topic for a whole other Bumblecast. Right, exactly. I think we're We we're actually ready have to move a topic on. for this Bumblecast. Yeah, we do, surprisingly. We do. What, what is it again? Uh, were we going to look back at uh, 2016? Is that what you were thinking, maybe? We, we tried to make this a happy show. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. I guess. Let's look forward to what's coming in 2017. Yeah. Hey. All right. <laughs> yes, it is 2017 as we're recording this. Wow. It is. We made it. We, we we're su- here. We survived. Happy New Year, everybody. 2016 Hopefully. did not take us. <laughs> not this time. <laughs> Truth be told, 2016 wasn't too bad for me in terms of work. I had a lot of new projects show up. Mm-hmm. And one of the things I'm looking forward to for 2017 is being able to talk about some of them. They move. Uh, one of which that I have been able to talk about already is I got our Sonic Boom, the TV series. Mm-hmm. One episode's already aired. Another one will air in the future as of this recording those details haven't been released but i've got one more coming out and that's exciting yeah that's awesome and if i'm allowed to pat myself on the back just as of this recording my episode is the second most watched episode of the season in the u.s that's good that's great and it's trailing behind the Season opener by about 40,000 views, but... The premiere. Yeah, that's kind of what I figured. aside from that, right now I've got that coveted second place trophy. Yeah. Well, it's pretty typical for a season premiere to kind of garner the most audience, but... Sure, sure. The fact that you're right there, right behind it, man, that's that's great. I don't call it right behind it, but you know, within spitting well, distance. Well, you're right, right behind, you're right, you're more right behind it than any of the other episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 2016 for me, you know, honestly, it wasn't too bad overall. Uh, just on a personal level, obviously the, the news, what went on in the news and everything was not great this year, 
but just on a personal level for me it wasn't too bad so you know we we've got i've been working we've been working on these awesome shows we've been coming up with ways to make it even better or to do more awesome things for you guys because you, you all are our awesome patreon supporters especially but uh, can, we tell them now? can we tell them now? Can we tell them now what we're going to do? Kyle, Kyle, can we tell them what we're going to do? Can we, can we, can we, can we, can we, can we open our it. presents now, Kyle? Can go, we, can we, can we? Go for it, Ian. <laughs> okay, so this may be the third season of the Bumblecast, uh-huh. but starting next Monday is the beginning of Bumblecast Gaming. Brand new content from me and Kyle coming straight to you, the wonderful people of the internet. Yes, straight to your eye and ear holes. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to get a you're going to get a visual component finally. <laughs> We're going to play some games. There's gonna be two of us going through some games. You know, slowly but surely gonna do some episodes at first. But with your support and you guys have been amazing over the past couple of years, we're gonna grow it. We're gonna make it even better. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna do uh every other week in between episodes of the Bumblecast, we're gonna drop an episode of Bumblecast Gaming, so a little bit, little bit of, you know, roughly 15-minute little nuggets for you. And, uh, and you'll get to enjoy that. And we've added a new incentive to the Patreon, where if we can reach a certain milestone, there's going to be a Patreon-exclusive Bumblecast every once a month? Yes, yes. Maybe we can swing that? Yes, we are going to uh, open up a Discord channel. Discord is a uh, gaming and uh, voice and text chat service uh, where you can come hang out with us in in the Discord chat. And uh, once a month, we'll be doing a special broadcast, Patreon-exclusive broadcast, where we'll uh, chat with you guys and hang out and answer questions or whatever happens. I don't know. Discuss random things. <laughs> yeah, it'll be up to you guys. And we've set that bar very close to where we are just to tantalize you. Right. right there. So hopefully we'll be able to get into that before too long. Yeah. I am looking forward to it. It's going to be exciting. Yes, 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 yes. Once a month, we just be getting together with with you Patreon supporters and just kind of hanging out. So uh, any Patreon supporter at any level is going to be more than welcome to come hang out with us. And one last little bit of Patreon Bumblecast goodness before we move on to our main topic. We have a winner for the Bumble Raffle. Every show we've got a contest, well, every Bumble, regular Bumblecast show, we won't be doing this on Bumblecast Gaming, but every regular Bumblecast show, uh, we draw one person to get a free autographed comic from me, and you can get into this drawing by either being a patron, in which case you're entered automatically for every draw, or to write in to Bumblecast at Yahoo.com and enter yourself in for every episode. Everyone gets the same priority going in, but the patrons get automatically entered. That's their perk. This episode's winner is... John B. Congratulations, John. We'll get in touch with you and let you know that we have selected you, in case you haven't heard the episode yet, and you will give us your contact info, and we will get you a book, and it will be wonderful and scrumptious and just marvelous. Nom, 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 nom. Don't eat it, though. It's not healthy. Well, you said scrumptious. I, I did, but more in the kind of literary... Anyway, what are you looking forward to in 2017? Uh, well, let's see here. I'm looking forward to a lot of things in 2017. There's some pretty cool stuff going on. What do we got? Movies? You looking forward to any movies this year, Ian? I know I am. I am greatly looking forward to Logan. Yes. Actually, yes, I am, too. With trepidation. Well, because the first Wolverine movie was <laughs> bad. Yes. The tie-in game was fantastic. So I've heard. It gets a little tedious towards the end, but that opening segment is just phenomenal. And a really neat feature of it is they've got three separate models for Logan loaded at the same time. The fleshy version, well, the skin version, the muscle version, and the adamantium skeleton version. So as you take damage it actually tears away the different layers so it reveals more of him underneath. Wow. That's and if cool. you stand still, it actually heals back up. Nice. And needless to say, it is viciously <laughs> violent. <laughs> Just, whoo! If anyone's played it, the helicopter sequence, you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> I haven't seen the second one. Heard it's watchable. 
not that great. But the trailer for Logan, oh, if it's even half as good as that trailer, that's yeah, it's going to be good. Uh huh. I'm I'm excited to see X twenty three in a X Men movie finally, and uh, yeah, it just looks really dang good. That's really all I can say about it. Uh, <laughs> Wonder Woman, that's one I'm definitely looking forward to. It's like they the only she was. Yeah, she was the best part of Batman v Superman. Easily, hands the only down. good part of Batman v Superman. <laughs> <is to say. laughs> uh, the trailer, the trailer for that also looks really good. Uh, I am, I like you. I'm going in uh, into Wonder Woman with trepidation, like you're going into Logan. But I am hopeful because it we certainly looks it a lot better than the previous DC Comics m- previous movie outings, recent movie outings. That is. We want these to be good. Yes, yeah, we it's, do. Not, it's not like we're going and going now. Oh, we've got to see these because of geek <laughs> cred. It's no, we want this. To, it looks like they're bringing us fruit. Yes, Let it yes. be scrumptious fruit. Mm-hmm. Today's bubble gas was brought to you by the word scrumptious. Mm, I like scrumptious things. They're good. A lot of Marvel good. movies coming out, and uh, yeah, this year's kind of on the <laughs> other end of the spectrum is Thor three Ragnarok. Uh huh. First one was cute. Mm-hmm. You know, nothing special, but cute. It worked. It introduced Thor to the to people. Second one, not so hot. I like the not, second one. <laughs> it's, it's it's not great. Funny. No, no, it's not. So I'm just kind of going, if the third one kind of makes me happy in the turn off your brain sort of thing, it, it will have met the bar with the other two, and I guess it's okay. Mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to Thor Ragnarok just because I'm looking forward to Thor and Hulk palling around. Now, if the rumors are true, and if it's basically they're smuggling Planet Hulk into the theater under the guise of a Thor movie, all is forgiven. Yeah, because, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> I'm waiting. You know. I'm ready for that. I'm way into that. That sounds awesome. <laughs> uh, supposedly, Doctor Strange is going to play a decent role in it as well as i heard that as well yeah as far as recent rumors go i still uh, need to see his movie i'm behind on my movies uh dr strange this is definitely a really good movie you should you should definitely see it Uh, i was i was pleased with it i wasn't i actually honestly the trailer didn't necessarily wow me or uh bowl me over or anything with it but uh the movie actually was really good and okay. uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, the first movie, actually was the same way. I wasn't really into it from the trailer, but uh, the movie itself was really awesome. So I'm definitely looking forward to uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. For me, Guardians of the Galaxy kind of falls in the same boat as the Thor movies. Because the first movie, granted, they're throwing a lot of stuff at you right. to digest really fast. Mm-hmm. But to me, it on the second and third viewing, it very much felt like... Stuff happens. The movie. There well, wasn't so much a cohesive story flow <laughs> as things kind of just happened to tumble into an order. That's very true. But it was fun. Exactly. It was very fun. So as long as the second one is fun, I, what do you want? It's entertainment. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, I would agree. Uh, also coming out this year, we got Star Wars Episode Eight. Not much we can really <laughs> say on it, I suppose. <laughs> I do hope that it does its own thing, because as much as The Force Awakens was fun, it really felt like A New Hope 2.0. Yeah, it was definitely a retread of pretty much all of them, but it definitely pulled most of it from A New Hope. I mean, I understand that because you have to rebuild Confidence the brand after the prequels, Mm -hmm. but uh, Confidence has been restored. People are loving Rogue One. Time to do some new stuff. The fact that Rogue One is such a major departure for the series in a good way, that the uh, original prequel trilogy was not a good departure, <laughs> uh, gives me hope that they will uh, go in a similar direction with Episode Eight. Not necessarily a similar tone or anything, just in a, a just breaking it away into its own thing without necessarily losing everything that makes it, you know, Star Wars. And hopefully it sets the tone for the other kind of side calls they've got going. The Han Solo solo movie, the Mm -hmm. Yoda movie that they're talking about. If they're strong films in the same way you're saying Rogue One is, Mm -hmm. 
maybe they won't feel like complete cash grabs. I'm hoping so. I'm really, I'm really hoping so. Uh, I can, I'm, I'm pretty okay right now with uh, a Star Wars movie a year. It's a little weird to think about that, but if, uh, if they're going to be as good as Rogue One and uh, Episode Seven were, I'm, I'm on board for now, <laughs> at least. I kind of like it because. I feel like the cinem- the Marvel Cinematic Universe kind of got us in this general mindset. Uh-huh. But I like these serialized movies. Right. As I long do. as they're strong on their own, but I do like this kind of thing where it's exciting to go to the movies because it isn't just, here's the one big blockbuster that everyone will talk about for a month and then be gone. It's something you can continue to talk about and really get into and invest yourself in. Mm-hmm. That's why I, I like the Marvel Cinematic Universe a lot, actually. Uh, both on the TV front and on the uh, on the film front, just because they've really interconnected this world rather well, and I am always excited to see where they go next with it and see what uh, what more they're going to bring to the table. And speaking of what uh, Marvel's going to be bringing to the table this year, they've got a trio of Netflix shows coming on uh on tv switching over to tv we got uh, iron fist the punisher and the defenders all coming out this year that's three series in one year which is a bit that's of a, a change bit. bit of a change because uh they used they were only on they were only doing two but this year it's three i'm not as familiar with the defenders as a team uh uh-huh. but the lineup i know of is pretty heavy hitters like big name characters the defenders are very different were very different in the comics from this team they're building now yeah so who's the team that's going to be on the tv show because i don't think they're going to get hulk and namor and dr strange and ghost rider for the tv series (laughs) uh none of them are going to be in this version of the defenders Okay then. Um, Ghost Rider has been on Agents of Shield for the uh, before the uh, mid season break. He was the central character of the arc on Agents of Shield, but uh, I guess they're switching away from that. And uh, for the Defenders, right now we've got let's see, let me think. We've got Daredevil, we've got Jessica Jones, we've got Luke Cage and Iron Fist. Are the uh, main four? Oh, and the Punisher, I think, will be part of them as well. Okay. Now, is Luke Cage and Jessica Jones done, or are they going to be continuing alongside all these other series? As far as I know, Luke Cage and Jessica Jones have gotten second seasons, but they are uh, probably at least another year off. Okay. Cause... For for Jessica Jones, I think Jessica Jones was twenty eighteen, and Luke Cage might be twenty nineteen. I'm not sure. I was going to say, if you're going to juggle Luke Cage and Jessica Jones and Iron Fist in their own series and have them all in the Defenders, I just, oh, God. <laughs> I would hate to be the supervising editor of that. Just, uh-huh. <laughs> Really? Honestly, those three especially should just really have their own show. <laughs> or at least, at least, <laughs> at least Luke Cage and Iron Fist. Because those guys are a team. Those guys are always a team. Chris, if you're going to do that, why don't you just do Heroes for Hire? But, eh, what do I know? Well, if you if you watch Luke Cage, they actually do make a little bit of a reference to that, but I won't spoil it oh, for okay. anybody. It, I'm behind on my movies. I am impossibly behind on my TV, so. <laughs> the TV side is really good. I think you would enjoy it if you uh, if you get a chance to sit down and catch it. Well, probably not, because the one thing that 2017 is definitely bringing is a whole lot of games. Oh, yes. Tons of games. Tons and tons of games. Like, uh, first up, with a little bit of Christmas money, and because it was on sale, we got the HD remake of Odin Sphere. Ah. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the subtitle. It's something Norse. (laughs) Oh, what the heck? Lefetisfavel. There we go. Lefetistic. Anyway. It's perfect. uh, Odin Sphere was a PS2 era um, platformer battler RPG. Like a side-scrolling RPG. Yeah. Combat style. And uh, absolutely gorgeously uh, animated sprites. Yes, it is. It does look very good. And it was notoriously brutal. (laughs) So I've heard 
And the leveling up system was very weird because you had stuff like how much you HP you got from eating leveled up as a stat on how much you ate. Oh. <laughs> so, like, I think it was something like your inventory space could be leveled up like a stat by the number of pouches you find. And there was all sorts of crazy inventory juggling. And there were more than one instance where boss fights took like a half an hour because the slowdown was so bad, but that was okay because it made you able to manage all the stuff on the screen. Uh (laughs) The HD remake, which is utterly gorgeous is more than just a new coat of paint. It adds levels. It adds enemy types and has overhauled the battle system completely so that there's a completely different tech tree to upgrade, a whole different way to use each of the characters who already had unique move sets and play styles. And they really toned down the difficulty and amped up the you are awesome factor. <laughs> Pretty much everyone has some way to go flying through the air, crouching tiger, hidden dragon style, just beating up stuff repeatedly. And, oh, it's fun. Nice. If you get a chance to pick it up, I would highly recommend it because it is very much a pickup play and just nuts. The voice acting can be a little hit or miss, but I feel that's more of a problem with the localization rather than the voice direction. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, Like I said, it's absolutely gorgeous, and it's heavily built on Norse mythology, primarily the end scenario of Ragnarok, which is automatically gold star in my book. Love that. Nice. But I've got to get through it as fast as I can, because later this month, Tales of Berseria comes out, which is the latest (laughs) installment in the Tales of series, which is all about flashy, pretty, fighting RPG stuff, except in 3D. Yes. I have not played... (laughs) <laughs> I've not played any Tales game beyond Vesperia. I really need to get on that at some point. They are finally coming to PC, at least, so uh, that means I can finally start dabbling in them again, I think. Perhaps we might even dabble with it in Bumblecast Gaming? Sure. Let's, Maybe? Let, let, us, let, let, let us do that. No, sure. What are you looking forward to gaming-wise? Oh, man. Uh, well, I do not have a PS4, and it will probably be sometime before I'm getting one, but I am really looking forward to, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, which is, I don't know if I like that title or hate it. (laughs) I can't decide if it's a horrible title or a pretty cool title, (laughs) but it's a really cool game. Uh, basically, uh, what's that? I was going to say, that's the one where you're hunting robot dinosaurs and stuff, right? Yes, yes, yes. Um, There aren't many games, honestly, trailers for games, it's kind of rare that they outright just completely impress me or blow me away in any way at this point. Maybe it's just because I'm getting old and cynical. (laughs) I don't know. Maybe I'm just getting crotchety in my old age. I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's just like, oh, I, I... I can see a game trailer and think, oh, that looks pretty neat. I might play that. Or I can be like, eh, are you sure you're going to actually be able to do all this stuff? <laughs> no Man's Sky. Uh, but uh, with this game, I was like, oh, man, this is actually really cool. A really neat idea. I mean, we've seen robot dinosaurs before. It's really not a whole new concept or anything. Yeah, but these are neat looking. Right, exactly. And uh, you play as a, like, female, uh, I guess kind of like a cave woman style. Because she has that kind tribal of... Tribal like, huntsman? Tribal, yeah, that more tribal look. That's kind of the word I was looking for. Um, and the trailers actually kind of surprised me because it started out as she was just, you know, going around in hunting gear and hunting. And then all of a sudden she was hunting dinosaurs. And then all of a sudden the dinosaurs became robot dinosaurs. And I'm like, now that's pretty cool. (laughs) It was like a slow, it was a slow burn the way, the way they revealed it. It was like, okay, there's the, there's a tribal woman. She's uh, out hunting. That's pretty awesome. 
Uh, and then all of a sudden she's out hunting dinosaurs. I'm like, okay, that's even cooler. <laughs> and then like part of their skin explode, part of the dinosaur skin explodes off and they're freaking robots underneath. And I'm like, okay, I'm in. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, okay, <laughs> robot dinosaurs. That's pretty cool. I'm down. <laughs> So I'm definitely looking forward to that. It may be a few years before I get to play it. Uh, my backlog is absolutely enormous, so I'm really not in the market for a new console at all. Mm -hmm. But I'm still looking forward to it because I just want to see how awesome it is. Because it looks really of good. Of course, now that the PS4 Pro is coming out, you might be able to get a PS4 vanilla for cheaper, maybe, question that's, mark. That's very true. They 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 have really dropped in price considerably due to that which is really strange because the ps3 is still pretty pretty pricey actually i think the standard ps4 and the ps3 might be not too far apart in price right now which is really i weird. don't know i've seen ps3s for 50 bucks well true true but if you want one that's actually got a hard drive in it <laughs> uh... then they get a little more they get a little more up there they are dropping though too finally it took them forever so uh anyway Let's see, what else am I looking forward to this year? Ah, the expansion for Shovel Knight, Spectre of Torment. Oh, yeah. I'm always... Can't wait to get brutalized by that. I am looking forward to that one. Uh, from what I understand, from what I've read, uh, it is a completely new campaign. Rebuilt from the ground up, new levels, uh, new abilities, of course. You're going to have all of uh, Spectre Knight's abilities at your disposal. And, uh, yeah. I don't, I don't know which direction they're going to go with the story. I'm really looking forward to that because they kind of uh, went in an unexpected direction for the uh, previous expansion. So They did, they did. But it's going to be completely new because the previous expansion was... Uh, most of it was just uh, levels, previous levels, the original Shovel Knight levels, but uh, you could play them in a new way with a different character. This time it's all new levels, so mm -hmm. I'm definitely looking forward to that one. And I would be utterly remiss to not mention Sonic Mania oh, and yes. Project 2017. Mm -hmm. Now, Project I'm, 2017, I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little, I'm never impressed anymore by uh, <laughs> trailers without gameplay. So yeah. I wait for. I am in waiting for a gameplay trailer before I really pass any judgment on that, but I'd be lying if I, if I uh, didn't say I wasn't looking forward to it at least a little bit. <laughs> I'm hoping they don't deviate too far from the Generations formula because I liked that just fine, but uh, we'll see what happens. I'm sure it's going to be very interesting. Yes, yes, I am definitely looking forward to that. And we've already seen a fair bit of Sonic Mania, and it is nothing but gold. Oh, Sonic Mania is brilliant. It will be It will be great. I have no doubt Christian Whitehead so far has done no wrong. And it doesn't look like he's going to be doing wrong with this one either, so... And T-Lopes' music is just phenomenal. Yes, 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 yes. He's a very nice man. I got to meet him at, uh, oh, what was it, the Sonic Sega Fan Jam ah. last year. Nice. Very cool guy. Yeah, he, I've been listening to his music for a super long time. He's been doing Sonic remixes for forever, so it's really nice to get him, to see him get the uh, the recognition that I think he deserves, because he's super talented. So, let's see what else do we got here. Ah, yes. Drift Stage, a racing game that's in development, still in early alpha stages. <laughs> uh, I have been following the development of this one for quite a while. I believe the Kickstarter for it was back in 2015. Uh, it is fairly slow going on it, but I am definitely excited about it. It's basically a racing game. It is a racing game with a very much an 80s aesthetic. Looks and plays like a classic arcade racing game from the 80s or 90s mostly from the 90s really but it looks like an 80s game sort of couched in this aesthetic of uh i don't want to say like a cyberpunk world it's more like a 80s synth wave world i suppose lots of neon is what you're saying exactly yes there's definitely okay. a lot of neon and uh lots of pixels 
but they look really good and the music is phenomenal so i am definitely looking forward to that one i'm hoping it's going to come out this year they haven't officially announced a release date or anything because they're still they're still in fairly early stages of development i think they finally got the driving model kinks of the uh, driving model mostly worked out and then it's just on to uh designing some more tracks and getting car ai working and all that fun stuff so but uh there's a delorean in it so you know i'm on board sold done yeah (laughs) ship it (laughs) pretty much pretty much the car selection is actually really dang cool it's pretty much every single great car from the 80s is represented in some way I mean, their their names are changed, but it's obvious what they are. <laughs> <laughs> and then I guess the next big one for me, and big as in I find myself thinking of it randomly on days going, soon, soon it would be mine, mm-hmm. is Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Ah, yes. This one, I'm really hoping it lives up to all the hype I've built up for it in my head. Mm. because what they've shown off is absolutely stupendous. I mean, the fact that the environment itself is truly dynamic, so that in one example they had, Link had to chop down a tree to make a bridge across a gorge. It wasn't go to the predetermined spot, hit A button, make a bridge. It was, you chop down this tree, and if you do the angle right, it'll make the bridge. If you don't do it right... It's going to fall off the cliff, and you're out of luck. Oh, that's cool. The dungeon crawling looks much more open-ended. It's it's basically Skyrim, but Zelda. Mm-hmm. And the map is absolutely enormous. Yeah, it looks pretty huge. Mind-blowingly huge. And what's really tantalizing is somebody took a brief clip of Link standing on a cliff overlooking the vast map and they zoomed in real close to one part of the volcano and there was something moving against the tide of the smoke and the lava looking like it was deliberately crawling up the mountainside except at that distance it has to be enormous i want to know what it is I want oh, to fight my. this thing, whether it wants to fight me or not, and it's going to kill me, but it's going to be fun when it happens. <laughs> that kind of goes into something else that we have on our list here. I have on my list, I suppose, uh, would be the Nintendo Switch. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, once again, not really in the market for a new console. Probably not going to pick one up for quite a while, because I have a massive backlog. And I really don't need to be getting any more consoles or even games right now, but oh well. Buy, buy, consume. Yeah, I know. I keep buying and buying and they just keep sitting on my shelf and it's like, (laughs) oh, geez, this is, this is horrible. I'm doing this all wrong. Anyway, yes, the Nintendo Switch looks really cool. Uh, It seems like it's been confirmed to have a touchscreen finally. So that's good news. I didn't see that confirmed. Yeah, that's good news. Uh, I think it was like in some of the patent drawings or something. Okay. So it's practically confirmed. There was an odd thing in the patent drawings showing that it could fit into a heads-up display and turn it into a VR screen. Mm, possibly. Which is odd, but neat. It's, it looks, seems like a little big for a VR screen. Well, there's a Nintendo Direct scheduled for the 13th, which is well after the recording of the show. So we should have more information at that point. So that's something else I'm looking forward to in 2017. Yeah, yes. More information on what the Nintendo Switch even is and how much it is and where we can buy it. And you you know it you does. have a devoted base when we're looking forward to a glorified commercial. That's effectively... Yeah. Uh, he's, <laughs> we're, we are... We are shills. <laughs> no, shills get paid. <sighs> Well, I'll talk to Nintendo and see if I can work something out. <laughs> <laughs> we do talk about Nintendo a lot on this show. <laughs> we do, and as a Sega kid, I feel like uh, <laughs> maybe we should I just trade my mother country. But... Maybe we should do an episode on like a Sega console or something. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll find one that's worth talking about. 
<laughs> Genesis. Genesis was good. Dreamcast. Dreamcast. Was a fantastic console. Oh man. Hey, the Dreamcast is still alive. Don't even don't even tell me that, man. Dreamcast <laughs> is still around. It's thinking. It's well, it's got games coming up for it every year. Seriously. Homebrew games. It's yeah. not they're not officially licensed, obviously, but they're coming out every year, and some of them are really good. So there's yeah, that. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll have to talk about the Dreamcast eventually. There you go. There's something our listeners can look forward to in 2017, maybe. Us talking about the Dreamcast. Yes. Yes, because, oh, I have memories. I love the Dreamcast. But there is one thing that they look forward to every episode, and that is the Q&A session. Woohoo! Now, if you are looking forward to getting your question answered by Ian or me, but mostly by Ian, uh, you can email us at bumblecast at yahoo.com. Hit us up on Twitter using the hashtag BumbleCast. You can uh, send your tweets to at KyleJCRB or at IanFlynnBKC. Or uh, message us on Patreon, either in the comments section on any of the articles there or uh, in a message to directly to us. We will see it. So, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the priority Q&A from our awesome supporters over on Patreon. This first question comes from Sam Cybercat. Given his inclusion in Sonic Lego Dimensions, the Sonic Twitter posts, and of course his frequent appearances in the comics, do you feel that the fans are more receptive of Big the Cat these days? Um, depends on what level of fan you want to define that by. <laughs> if you mean, like, Sonic fans like us, I would say 50-50. Sure. If you Take the casual Sonic fan, doesn't really know beyond Tails, Amy, and Knuckles. More than likely, they're, they're going to go, who? Right. <laughs> or, oh yeah, he was from the Dreamcast game, right? He did the fishing? Yeah, that's dumb. Yeah. So, I don't know. I think uh, Aaron Weber and I share an affinity for the big round cat. I like him too. I, I will say that when he was first introduced, I was opposed because he was so different. He didn't fit with the Sonic style. Mm -hmm. But that, over time, is what endeared me to him. Right. Is that you have all this bombastic stuff in the world, and he's just going to fish. And that's okay. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and it's just so, it's such a refreshing non sequitur. I, I love Big. Big is great. He's just a simple guy with simple needs. And that need is fish. Right. <laughs> and naps. Yes. Yes. And finding Froggy. Which leads to naps and fishing. So we're all good. Yes. It's very good. Uh, Big, Big the Cat to me is more of a meme than anything when it comes to this on <laughs> Twitter. But I still like him. He's fun. Next one comes from Justin G. This one is, of course, to you, Ian. Really? For me? Yes, for you. I know you've mentioned before your team has approached Nintendo to pitch a Mario comic and they were not interested. But while I feel Zelda would be an obvious second choice, if you had the option, what other Nintendo series would work best to tell a story and pitch the benefits for Nintendo to approve a Mario comic? I'm uncertain of the wording of this. I think we get the spirit of the question. Right. First, first and foremost, let, let's clarify something here. It's not my team. It would be great if I had a team, but it's not my team. It's Archie's team, and I am a cog within it. I don't get to call those kinds of shots. And as for how the Mario comic pitch came about, can't really specify on who talked to who or how that started, so let's just leave that gray and nebulous. All right. Um, I think most of the Nintendo properties would be good for a comic. It just varies on what type of comic. Right. I think like, before we've talked about Metroid. Being yeah, I think Metroid would be a fascinating comic, but it couldn't be like the Sonic comic. It would have to be its own type of story. Mm -hmm. Completely different pacing, completely different tone, completely different art style, completely different approach. Mm -hmm. I can uh, see it being more in the vein of like Metroid Prime. I think Metroid Prime especially would make a good comic. Right. I think with Samus in particular, I'd like to highlight 
her loneliness in this vast galaxy that's teeming with life. Mm -hmm. But she is so unique and so removed from these various species that there's always the sense of loneliness and being removed. Isolation. I suppose. Yeah. Isolation. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it is her alone in these hostile terrains. So you would really need to let the art tell the story for most of it. Right. Right. Um, while the prime games do an excellent job of fleshing out the narrative in the world with the data entries, Mm -hmm. I think what undercuts it. And we see a lot of this in other M especially Mm -hmm. is Thomas having a running inner monologue. Yeah. That's kind of necessary to get a little more into her head, but I think that needs to be used sparingly. I think she's a much stronger character when she is conveyed through her actions and not through her introspection. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you about, actually, was the um, inner monologue stuff, because they did they did really run that into the ground with other end. <laughs> so I was wondering uh, how you would want to uh, portray isolation without using an inner monologue or using it just sparingly, which can definitely do. It would require some serious effort on the part of both the writer and the artist, Mm -hmm. but I think it could definitely be done. There are a lot of examples of comics out there that just, they don't have many or even any words and they still manage to really tell a uh, great and interesting story. The best comparison I can think of off the top of my head is, you know, you've got other M where she's reflecting on the final fight with mother brain and talking about the baby and talking about the symbology of the bottle ship and blah, 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 blah. And talking about the baby (laughs) and the baby for something different. (laughs) And then Metroid prime, when you first land on talent four and you hop out of the ship and there's nothing but open space and you look up and the rain is hitting your visor and you are alone. Mm hmm. No monologue, barely even any text for the mission briefing. It's just you're there, and that's all you have is you. Right. And I think that is Samus more than the other stuff. I would agree. Definitely. Um, I would love to tackle a Star Fox comic. Oh, that would be um, fun. <laughs> that one, I think, would fall a little more traditionally in how I approach Sonic and Mega Man. Yeah, that gotta... would be a bit more of a adventure style sonic yeah fairly sonic clear narrative game. to follow yeah yeah definitely an action adventure style story uh kirby i could see is more of a light-hearted thing but still along the same vein because boy howdy what i love to tackle the dark matter trilogy oh man you can get some darkness going on in there <laughs> literally <laughs> Uh, Mario, I think, would be the most difficult. We, I know we've touched on this before. We have. We've. I think we mainly focused on where we were thinking, like, Galaxy would be a good... Mm-hmm. It's just the setting. Each game has a unique setting, and things are different. So it's really difficult to say, like, when or where would it take place. Right. It, it's The level of freedom you have with that world is almost too much to handle, because anything goes in Mario. Right. Mario Mario really does not have much of an overarching narrative or anything to really pull from. Uh, Legend of Zelda, any one of the games mm-hmm. could be turned into a sweeping comic epic. Or taking its themes and making an original story would be loads of fun. Either would work mm-hmm. very easily. So, you know, I I would love to tackle any that they would throw at me. Heaven help me, I'd figure out how to make an F Zero book work if they gave it to me. Oh, but you could do that easily, man! It's all superheroes. <laughs> it is very ninety superheroes, and boy, it would be camp as all get. Oh man, I would love an F Zero book, man! I would buy the <laughs> heck out of that over and over. Oh, but you man. would really need the right artist to convey the sense of speed because you had to have the racing. Right, the and racing. Part of the the racing has to be a big part of the story. But the character designs, the character designs are just so over the top ridiculous. But I love them. It's it's great. I love F Zero. Don't forget the theme songs. Oh yes, oh. we do. We do. In fact, yeah, we. Need, I don't know how you do a soundtrack for a comic, but you need to figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> And finally, our last priority Q&A question comes from Andrew F. Are there any card games you two play to escape reality? Kyle, 
Well, I think he's asking us if he wants to duel. Duel? Hey, Kyle! Card games on motorcycles! I'm down with that. <laughs> Screw the rules, I have money. <laughs> uh... I've played Cards Against Humanity a few times when we're in Charlotte with friends, but don't play a lot of collectible card games, primarily because I don't have the money to buy into them, probably because I don't really have a lot of people to play them with, and I don't have the space to store them, and I'm a bad enough collector as it is. You don't need to throw that carrot in front of me. <laughs> I've never really gotten into collectible card games, honestly. Uh, I was never into Pokemon. Magic cards weren't my thing. It's... I don't know what it is. I've tried playing them. You know, people just, you know, hand me a deck and they're like, hey, come play this. And I'm like, all right. So I'll play it with them. It'll be fine, but I'll never really get sucked into it. And, uh, yeah, Cards Against Humanity is like the last card game I've played, which I do quite enjoy, but it's definitely a polarizing game. People, there's <laughs> definitely people who do not enjoy that game and I can understand why, but I do. It's, it's fun for me. I think part of the fun of Cards Against Humanity is to test just how far you will let your sense of humor go and just how much you trust your friends. It's like, do I really <laughs> want to make this joke? This is funny. <laughs> it's not appropriate. I'm a horrible person, so I'm all in. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm truly awful. I'm, I'm just, I am just horrible. So, I mean, anything goes with me, man. Pretty much. I'm, I'm open. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll bring it with me next time I come up there or something. Because I do, oh, own it. Boy. I do own it, and I haven't even cracked it open yet because we don't really have oh, anybody to play with around here. So, well, you know about if the I hidden had, card, it, right? It, what's that? The hidden card? Uh no. They they didn't reveal this until I think they reached so many units sold. Mm -hmm. If it's still there. Once you crack the box open, take a razor blade to the very top of the box. There is a card hidden within the packaging. Oh, really? <laughs> I can, yeah. Those, I can see those guys doing that. I had not even I'm not going to tell that. you what the card says because this is a family show. Right. Is that, a, is that from the base game? I believe so, yes. Okay, I'll, I'll check that out then because I hadn't heard that at all. Nice. All right. And uh, that's it. For the uh, priority Q&A, let's get into some standard Q&A this week on the Bumblecast. First one comes from Da Big RG. Did you ever figure out how to bring back downtown ebony hair? In a pine box. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, <laughs> uh, I may have at one point. It's been so long, and he is so low priority. Uh if I did, it probably would have been within the extent of fleshing out the middle tier villains so that, you know, there was something that they could face on a lower level. Probably would have been for the Chaotix since they were being steered more towards the detective agency. Right. But I don't think I had anything concrete. Uh, was he is not uh, off limits, right? He's pre-reboot. Right. Okay. I'm just wondering, I don't know how, <laughs> where that goes in terms of uh, allowing him or not. So yeah, Even if he wasn't pre-reboot, he's not really within the top 7,500 worth of, no. no. Okay. <laughs> no. 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 Okay. No. No. Okay. Uh, this next one comes from A Kessel 92 how old was Antoine when he met Sally? I asked because there might be a problem with ages and the timeline. Uh, I have to pull up the reference sheet that we have for ages, but he would be a little older than Sally, uh, since he's you know of legal age and married to Bunny in the present timeline. Mm -hmm. But they were kids. All right. <laughs> and this last question comes from Emery. Did Dr. Eggman conquer all of Mobius in the new continuity like he did in Sat AM before Sonic 1? Uh, no. Uh, with his conquest, the first one was Sonic 1, and that was strictly the kingdom of Acorn. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things I was never satisfied with in Sat AM was that Mobitropolis seemed to be the capital of the world, that all things hinged on the Acorn uh, 
uh, Kingdom. Mm-hmm. And it, that just felt so simplistic to me. And it really didn't fit with the game world as we know it now. Which obviously they couldn't play it for back in the early 90s because that stuff didn't exist then. But, right. Um, with a new continuity, Eggman isn't so much as an omnipresent ruler as a constant threat. He has enough influence around the globe to always be in a position of authority, but he isn't the total global dictator like he was in the old continuity. Mm -hmm. So Genesis of a Hero is pretty much the origin story of Eggman's conquering of the planet. And I think that helps him stay a little fresher. It's something a little new, and it allows him to be more active in the world instead of sitting atop his iron throne commanding cronies. Yeah. Eggman's always been a very hands-on type of guy. That's very true. It's very true. All right. And that's going to do it for the uh, Q&A for this episode and bring us to a close on this edition of the Bumblecast. Woohoo! We did it! Yay! Despite the technical problems that you guys won't be hearing. <laughs> Hopefully... <laughs> Shh, pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. <laughs> you might be hearing a couple of them just because we can't go back, but still, sorry. <laughs> anyway, if you want to follow what I'm doing, head over to BumbleKing.com or over to Twitter at Ian Flynn BKC. That's where you can find everything that is about moi. Or you can head on over to KNGI.org where you can find out what I'm doing. Or you can follow me on Twitter at KyleJCRB. Or tune in every Saturday evening at 7 p.m. Eastern Time over at 8bitx.com for uh, Game Fuel, my live streaming video game music show where I play video game music arrangements, remixes, uh, all sorts of fan-made and awesome stuff that uh, I think you should be listening to. Sonic, Sonic, Mega Man, and uh, everything in between and outside of that. (laughs) And, uh, of course... It'd be remiss if we did not give a shout out to all of our lovely and excellent and beautiful Patreons. Thank you so much for sticking with us all through last year and into this year. And those who are coming on new, welcome. Those who had to bow out, thank you so much for your support. This episode, we're going to give a shout out to Daniel H., Zephyr Flame, Soon, The Cat, John B., Sam Cybercat, Deus Miles, Mike B, Fancy Fool, Connell T, Daniel L, Samuel P, Justin G, Jennifer R, Candy, for now, Angie Fritz, John M, S. Yavarovich 9X, Alex P, and James K. Thank you all once again. Yes, thank you very much. You are all glorious people. Everyone who supported us, everyone who currently supports us, everyone who has supported us, and everyone who will be supporting us. Thank you. And even if you don't plan on supporting us, but you enjoy listening, you're also awesome. Yeah. We will see you next week for the first episode of Bumblecast Gaming. And we'll see you in two weeks for the next episode of the Bumblecast. Woohoo! Take care, everybody. See you later. Doodles. With this episode, we're going to be... Cut that. Perfect. <laughs> Hi there, and thanks for listening to the Bumblecast. If you liked our show, be sure to hit the subscribe button and consider supporting us on Patreon. We have some great rewards as well as big plans on how to make the show even better. Also, rate and review our show on iTunes. It gets more folks listening and helps us out, so we definitely appreciate it. Original music composed by Ken Coda Snyder, used with permission. Find more of his music at bc.s3m.us and find the theme song at noisechanradio.bandcamp.com, available as a pay-what-you-want download.